If you look at the history of professional basketball in Philadelphia, Philadelphia 76 and went to the championship in 1977 and lost to the Portland Trailblazers. Went to the championship in 1980 and lost to the Los Angeles Lakers. And they got Moses Malone for 1982-1983 season. And prior to that season, Moses Malone was wearing the franchise. White Nike, red swoosh. Perfect. Almost perfect. 1982, Bruce Kilgore came up with the Nike Air Force One and blessed Moses Malone with that shoe. And in turn, he blessed the city with the championship in 1983. So that shoe means a lot to this city because Moses Malone was that one player. Philadelphia Sixers were one player away. And then there was Moses. Moses came and he delivered the Philadelphians to the promised land. It's called Fo Fo Fo. You say that anywhere in the city, if you're 25 or older and you like basketball, you know what that means. Fo Fo Fo. That's the Air Force One. And that is what Moses Malone proclaimed would be the record for the 76ers. It was sweet. 4-0. Four, Four is the number. And they swept the Los Angeles Lakers. Four games to zero. And the rest is history. At the time that the Air Force One hit Philadelphia, Philly was all about ball. Philly, we play hard and we know how to play. And I, I'm not hating on no other city because there's great players all over the world, but Philly, we do it big here. And it reflects the sneaker of the time, Nike Air Force One. And I say force because that's what you got on the court. The major innovation with the Air Force One is obviously in the title of the shoe itself, you know, the Air Technology. I mean, when we first heard that there was Air shoes, I mean, it was kind of incredible. I don't, I don't think any of us really believed that there was Air inside there. And I remember the one advertisement with the Air Force One, and the sole of the shoe was cut away and did a diagram, and you could actually see inside of it, and it said it was Air. You gotta understand, bro. Sneakers made in the 70s and early 80s, I mean, were really, really hard on your feet. I mean, the more important thing really at that point used to be socks. You know, you, you look at old pictures, you see a lot of brothers wearing three, four, sometimes five pairs of socks because that's what gave you your cushioning on the concrete. But when the Air Force One came out, all of a sudden you could wear one pair of socks. Basketball shoes before 1982 were not uh, in modern terms, comfortable. They didn't offer that comfort or that, that support that players need. Uh, if you took a player in 2006, put them in a shoe, uh, say an 80, 80, 81 shoe, they'd be lucky if they lasted a quarter or you know, half a quarter in a shoe like that. The endurance and the stamina of a shoe all of a sudden changed. That was the Rock Kim. That's, that was like what you know, raised the bar of what sneakers could be. The unique, unique thing about Nike Air Force One is it went from being a basketball specific shoe with air, a new shoe with air, to a shoe that now culturally is accepted worldwide. People on other planets wear Air Force Ones. Martians wear Air Force One. <laughs> We started selling Air Force Ones in 1982. Um, sold pretty good. Uh, the guys liked the soles. They liked just the look of it. I, I think what, what really made it was the, the thickness of the sole, um, the strap. Uh, they liked the word air on it. Just the beefiness. That's the, the look that they wanted. It was a nice basic looking shoe, 
Not too many colors. If you had the Air Force One, you were the uh, SHIT. Back then in 82, shoes had what they called a run. <clears throat> shoes would come out, be out for a certain amount of time, and they'd go away. Kids in Baltimore, in particular, at that point in time, after the Air Force One had its initial run, were still coming to the stores like, yo, what's, you know, can I get them ones? Can I get those Air Force Ones? Three retailers known as the Three Amigos picked up on that, had meetings with Nike, and was like, look, why don't you bring back this shoe? You had Charlie Rudo Sports, Downtown Locker Room, and Cinderella Shoes. It was uh, Harold Rudo and myself who came up with this idea of, you know, resurrecting the Air Force One. We had a meeting and I told him I wanted to bring in uh, some Air Force Ones and what would it take to do it? They thought we were fucking crazy. They said, you guys, but I believe in you guys. If you guys are crazy enough to ask for it, we're crazy enough to make it for it. We were forced to take um, uh, 1,200 pairs of each color, a white royal blue and a white chocolate brown. Uh, we took them, uh, we sold them right out. The Air Force One was reborn. This was unprecedented. We started doing a program with Nike, a uh, different color each month. That's where the shoe of the month thing came from in Baltimore. Kids were fiending for this shoe every month, come in there buying every different color where they could get. They would come up to me, hey Paul, you think you can make uh, a, a sky blue? Yeah, we have that already in the works. That took it to another level. This is something that had never been done before. Back then, you had almost an internet between New York, Philadelphia, Baltimore. You had the I-95 corridor, I-95 uh, freeway, expressway, link these three cities. Next thing you know, cats in Philadelphia and New York are getting informed about what's going on in Baltimore and vice versa. When we found out where they were, we went. Oh yeah, people were coming down from New York buying shoes, people were coming from D.C. buying shoes from us. So the word got around pretty quick. And they would have 15 colors of Air Force Ones in the windows. I won all of those three times. That's what it was. We knew it was working. We, we were rocking. It just spread like wildfire. This is without advertising. This is without Nike making a, a, a big push. This is by word of mouth. This is through that internet connection that, that preceded the digital technology by you know, decades. That's where the genesis of this whole rebirth of the Air Force One came from. You, you never know. You, sometimes you just can't figure it out. It's, it's, it's like being in Las Vegas and you have the dice in your hand and you're rolling it. You just don't know. <laughs> I remember, I'll never forget that moment. I walked into the store and I saw these sneakers and I picked them up off the wall. And I was like, yo, what the? What are these? It, I, was, I was intrigued. I wasn't sold on them right off the bat until I wore them. It was the ball playing community that wore those sneakers off the bat to play ball. And then it started spilling off court. Could I remember a time when we wore basketball clothes all day long, like, you know what I mean? Gym shorts and everywhere we went. And we had sneakers on, gym shorts, and, and, and a jersey or, 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 or a tank top because we played ball. That's, that's how we live. Let me, let me make a connection for you. Like basketball and hip hop, they, they're so intertwined, it's not even funny, like. Before hip hop came along, there was nothing but basketball. When we were playing ball, like we were listening to, to rap music, you know, and the guys that were involved in hip hop, you know, they love basketball. A lot of them played ball. So the relationship between hip hop and, 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 and sports period, but mainly basketball, is really tight and interwoven. Me, particularly in my life, if I hadn't gone hip-hop, I'd have been a ball player. 
Just do it, baby. <laughs> you know, so there's always been that connection of like hip hop, basketball, New York, and the styles mesh. You know, walking here is a very functional part of living in New York, you know. So if you're going to walk, you know, it's like, what do you want to be seen in? The New York kid, whether, whether he's walking to school or walking to work or walking to his corner, whatever, jo whatever job he's doing, you understand? Comfort is key. The components is key. And the bragging rights that the shoe gives you walking up the block is key. People that look down at your feet, you know what I mean, in New York, you know, people... I contact after we get to know you, but before that, it's like, yeah, what's up? And then people looking down, you know what I mean? And if, you're, if your shoe game is tight, hey, what's up? How you? <laughs> and then they'll come up. <laughs> you want these to stick out more than anything. Because the first thing somebody do is they look you in the eye, give you a pound, and go to your foot. And you want that to be like, Psh, you want to knock their head right back up. Like, whoo! You could be bummy from head to ankle, but on your feet, it got to be fresh. Harlem has always been such a, such a, like a headquarters, if you will, or a center for African-American style, a great place for music, basketball, culture, history, pride, I mean, you know, on and on and on. Everything, like, fresh for young black was Harlem first. You know what I'm saying? Jazz was in Harlem. The Apollo was in Harlem. All the flashy basketball players were in Harlem. They were all driving up there in those voices. Being in Harlem and getting those sneakers, you call them Harlems, you call them Uptowns. You lived in Brooklyn and you called your sneakers Uptown. Cats from Brooklyn, they knew what time it was, you know? Cats from LES, they knew what time it was. They had to come Uptown to get Air Force Ones, or Airs, or Uptowns, or Nike Airs, Nike Airs. You know, that's what we originally called it, Nike Airs. That was the original nickname for the Air Force One. Now you can go anywhere in the Bronx, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, wherever, and ask for a pair of Uptowns and they're gonna know what you're talking about. It was just such a beautiful sneaker to wear and it came out in colors. You know, you had the fruit flavors, what we call them. You had the orange, you had the burgundy, you had the forest green, you had light blue. You know, so that meant that you could dip it up with different outfits and... There's 1,700 different Air Force Ones. There is no other sneaker that made that many different variations. Do you know of any? Nothing is as popular in um, dressing circles and, you know, in being fresh to death circles than Air Force Ones. That's some people's dress you. Like, they, they'll get fly, like, that's it, like, I'm, I, yeah, I, I wear with my linens, I, I put on my little tux with it, you know what I mean, like, and, and, and get married in them. Those are like one of those only sneakers that you can really do that and get away with it. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna kill them with these right here, oh, these right here, go murder them, woo, if somebody spill a drink, you really end up murdering somebody. <laughs> See, it's not just about having an LPS sneakers, it's about putting it together properly. Because if you put it together properly, that neck that snaps breaks a little harder. Because it's like, oh, he's just not wearing these sneakers and looking crazy. He's wearing the sneakers with the right shirt and the right hat, and he's killing them. Hip hop people stay fresh. They're clothes horses. Weird. We're clothes horses. We like to look good, and some of us are really extreme with it. And when you have rappers or when you have people are influencing the urban culture saying like this is my brand of choice, you know, um, that makes a huge impact on a young kid. You know, because that kid wants to have anything that that artist pretty much produces or uses. You know, in one sense you could probably credit hip hop in general um, almost 100% for the popularity of uh, both the brands and sneaker culture as we now know it. Um, 
but at the same time it's a little bit the chicken and the egg and hip hop in general is a reflection of what's going on in the streets. It was the streets. The streets made Air Force One's hot. Harlem made Air Force One's hot. No rapper, no nobody is responsible for that shit. Just the streets. And no one guy said, oh, I'm gonna wear Air Force Ones and make them hot. No, that shit happened in goddamn basketball tournaments. Like, what the fuck were those? And then it wasn't like everybody loved them. It was the, the fresh dudes who played basketball who were like, those are crazy. I'm not playing in those. I'm gonna wear those in the street. It wasn't like Nike was like, bow, the shoe of choice. This is for you. You know, it was something that was adopted. It was something that was real. It was something that happened slowly, one kid at a time, one community at a time. Air Force Ones will move without a commercial, without a superstar. It just put them on the shelves and watch them fly. Why? Simple, perfect sneakers. This is crazy things. Everyone rip off their shoes. Every fashion designer, everyone makes shoes based on this Air Force One. And, but still, maybe the Nike One is number one. When I look at all the SKUs that Nike produces, I still would have to say the Air Force One is probably the ultimate canvas for any designer. You can add on to it, you can, you can build up on it. It's such a strong foundation, you can erect anything, erect anything up on it. That's what the Air Force One to me is. It's the classic Nike, but even beyond just Nikes, it's the most classic sneaker out there. With, with the white on white, that's it. I mean, they're, they're too pure to play basketball in. And they're like a basketball sneaker. But just the lines and, and, and the, the purity of the white, I mean, they're so white. I mean, when you open up the box, let me say, when you open up a box of these, right, if you listen closely, you can hear the angels in heaven, right, sing, right? You open the box slowly and it's like, ah! <laughs> and you got these beautiful, pristine, white, all white ups with not a scuff on them. It's like, oh my God. That, that's what it is, B. <laughs> that's what it is. You know, and that, that's the passion that a lot of these kids in the hip hop community had towards footwear. Similar to my girl, you're good for me. You touch me right, you feel right. You're gushy, I'm coming back. I'm gonna represent you, represent me. I'm not flirting with anybody else. Just give me one. Now one girl. This is one. That's all I need. Perfect marriage. My shoes, my game, my sport. I do. <laughs> Dude, it, it's definitely married to the shoe. Does it have some other baby mama? You know what I mean? Does it have some other friends? Does it have some other little whatever, whatever, whatever on the side? Yeah. But is this probably the one? Is this like the one that I'm calling my baby mama? This is the baby mama. You know what I mean? And I need to see her. Yo, you can't, it's, people try to like theorize this whole sneaker phenomenon to like such a deep level. It's so simple. You make a nice looking sneaker that's comfortable, people gonna wear it. It's that simple. It's, it's, it is what it is, you know, it's love is love. Thank you.